Our society has an amazing history of successfully dealing with challenges that confront us. That success has created for many of us an abundant lifestyle, which allows us to be well-fed and have leisure time to relax and enjoy life. Ironically, it's that very lifestyle that has created perhaps one of our toughest and far-reaching challenges as a society. The rise of obesity and the lack of physical activity for many Americans has created health problems that are plaguing our country and healthcare issues that will reach into future generations. But it doesn't have to be that way. And I'm Adrian. Welcome to our show, Eat and Move. The title of the show says it all. Who we are and how healthy we are is all about what we eat and how we move. Sounds simple, doesn't it? How we eat and move pretty much determines our lifestyle. Now, Adrian and I, we're not talking about the house you live in. Or the type of car you drive. When we say lifestyle, we're talking about our health and whether or not we can enjoy a healthy lifestyle. Our philosophy of eating and moving for your health is focused on making small, achievable lifestyle changes over time. Which leads us to the question, are you happy with your lifestyle? Do you wish you could be more active and you wish you had more energy to enjoy each and every single day? Well, Tiana, most people you ask would admit they wish they were in a little better shape. And they also admit they probably don't eat as healthy as they should. But what we're really talking about here are unhealthy habits. Right, Adrian. Most of us tend to follow the path of least resistance. We think of exercising as inconvenient and eating healthy as time consuming and expensive. We're here to show you how easy it can be to eat and move for your health. Tiana and I will show you simple habits that you can adopt to help you live your life to the fullest. The fact that you're watching this means that you're concerned about your health and you care about what you eat and how you move. Perhaps now you're ready to make some healthy lifestyle changes. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. First and foremost, only you can decide why you want to make a change, and the why is the ultimate motivator. Adrian, when people come to you trying to get started, what's the first thing you tell them? It's just like you said, Tiana, people need to understand why they want to commit to a healthier lifestyle. So the first thing I do is tell them to write out why. Why do you really want to commit to making a healthy lifestyle change? Okay, I can see that, but I just want to make sure that I'm clear. So there's a difference between the whys that keep them from making healthy choices and the why or reason they should make new healthy choices, right? Exactly. People need to understand why they want to commit to a healthy lifestyle. Those are the real tough why questions. Why do I neglect my health? Why don't I exercise regularly? Why do I let my emotions control my eating? Why can't I change? Adrian, if someone is having those challenges and asking themselves those types of questions, I just don't really know how that's gonna motivate them to change. And that's okay, Tiana. That's just part of the process of figuring out what our challenges are so we can figure out what's gonna motivate us to change. Okay, I can see that. Then that leads us to setting up our goals. Without setting up goals, you're not likely to set up a plan you will stick with. Adrian, I have to agree with you on this one. Overarching goals should be established first. For example, I want to adopt a healthy lifestyle, or I want to run in a marathon next year. However, there need to be certain, what I call measurable objectives. To reach my goal of adopting a healthy lifestyle, my objective is to increase my water intake by drinking one to two more glasses a day, or I'm going to walk 30 minutes each day. Those are things you can measure in order to reach the goal. Goals should be short, sweet, and meaningful. Measurable objectives just provide the details to reaching your goal and become a part of your plan. 
Now you say objectives, I say short-term goals. Either way, the big goal or the why will determine your plan. Now everyone's plan will involve exercising and eating properly. Now personally, you know I'm pretty basic when it comes to eating. And I don't pay that much attention to flavor, but I bet you have some great tips on how to get started eating healthy. So Tiana, what's the first thing you tell people? I've seen your refrigerator, Mr. Adrian. And yes, you do need to pay attention because I'm just not talking about eating foods that are healthy for you, but are also tasty and simple to prepare. But eating right starts with a visit to our kitchen and taking a trip through our refrigerators and cabinets. When going through your cabinets, the first thing you want to do is read the labels and see if the foods you currently have are consistent with the nutritional needs of your new healthy lifestyle. You need to find out if the foods are high in sodium, fat, or sugar. Next, you want to pull the items out and get rid of food items that are not helping you reach your goals or help you to stick to your plan. This can be a challenge because we tend to think of the money we spent purchasing those items. No one wants to waste money, so perhaps you can donate some things or just share them with friends or with certain items, reduce the serving sizes until the food is gone. Just try to stick with the foods low in sodium, fat, and sugar. This is a process and you want to make sure that you're weaning yourself off the foods that are not going to help you reach your goal of ultimate health. You want to avoid a lot of processed foods. For example, TV dinners, chips, and canned foods that have a lot of sodium. Keep your plan and list of goals close at hand. Well, we've gotten rid of all the unhealthy foods. The next step is to replace it with healthy foods. Next, Tiana's going shopping at Wegmans grocery store and has some great tips on buying healthy foods. Clean kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. RBIs and 36 homers. Swings at the first pitch and fouls his feet back into the stand. Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Today we're going to visit one of my favorite grocery stores in my neighborhood, Wegmans. Ordinarily, I don't listen to Adrian, but today I'm taking his advice and I'm going to park further rather than closer to the store, which gives me an opportunity to get a little exercise by having to walk. Plus, I didn't even have to fight for a parking spot, so let's go. Different grocery stores have different layouts, but one of the reasons I love Wegmans is because all the essential superfoods are right at the front of the door. I mean, isn't it beautiful? Just a wide variety of color and everything. This is the best that farmers and nature have to offer. Another great thing about the produce section meeting you right at the door is that it delays you from going to the processed food section, which may make a difference in your choices and help you stick to your plan and meet your goals. Always remember you want to stick to your plan and your goals. It's very helpful that they put all the seasonal fruits and vegetables at the very front. It's best to buy produce when they are at the peak of their season. Not only do you get the best flavor, nutrition, but you save money because usually they're on sale. When products start to go out of season is when the price often climbs. For example, in the fall you find all kinds of apples, like my favorite which is Honeycrisp apples. Jamar Myers is a manager here at Wegmans, and he's going to tell us a little bit about produce and meats. Jamar, can you please tell us um, the difference between organic versus conventional fruits and vegetables? Because some people are a little unclear about that. Could you explain that a little bit? Yes, organic produce is grown in harmony with nature. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, there's no synthetic fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, genetically modified seeds, you know, any types of chemicals added to the product. What are the benefits? Uh, the benefits of organics include, you know, you're eating healthy, you're getting all the nutritional value um, from eating the fruits or the veggies. You're also protecting the environment by being sustainable. Uh, when there's no fertilizers putting on the products, and that means there's no fertilizers coming into the oceans, into the soil and water. Um, so you're conserving the environment as well. When it comes to freezing our vegetables and fruits, do they lose the nutritional value? It depends. It depends on how you freeze it and then how you cook it. 
Uh, the best way that we recommend is that you blanch your veggies before you freeze them. And by doing that, that actually maintains the nutritional value um, and the product is at its peak of perfection at that time. We mentioned the benefits of seasonal fruits and vegetables. Can you tell us a little bit more about the year-round fruits and vegetables? Yes, year-round fruits and vegetables include potatoes, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, peppers, certain varieties of tomatoes. Um, Fruit-wise, you have navel oranges will always be around, bananas, watermelon, cantaloupes. Here's something else that will help you stick to your plan, pre-packaged vegetables. It may be a little pricier, but it'll save you on time. Another aspect to shopping in the fresh produce section are the fresh herbs. Oregano, rosemary, and parsley are the year-round herbs. Like many of the other items, you can buy them whole or pre-packaged. You can use them fresh, or if you're like me and you want to save money, dry them and use them later. When purchasing your meats, you want to make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck. But remember, you want quality. When purchasing meats, what are some things that we should think about? You should think about the type of meat you would like, the marmalization of it, the color of it, and the freshness of it. And particularly, how are you going to cook it? What is the difference between non-organic and organic, poultry and pork, lamb, etc.? Organic items include items that are not fed synthetic feed. Also, they're not injected with steroids or hormones to increase their size. A lot of us have heard about grass-fed beef. Could you tell us about it? Grass-fed beef is cattle that is allowed to roam free, eat grass versus eating synthetic or chemical added feed. Lindsay Trott is our seafood manager, and she's going to tell us a little bit about fish. Is there a difference between farm-raised and wild fish? Absolutely. Um, farm-raised is a lot easier to get because it's cultivated in a farm, whereas the wild is much harder to get and it's more costly. What's considered fresh fish? Everything that we have in the case today, it means that it comes directly from the boat to the store and it's never been frozen. In dairy, we normally find all of the milk, cheeses, and yogurt. Some healthier alternatives are reduced fat, and fat-free products. For those who are allergic to dairy products, a couple of alternatives are almond or rice milk. For my bread lovers, your healthiest choices are high in fiber, whole wheat, multi-grain. And you know that breads have a lot of carbs in it, so if you're really trying to look for another alternative, you can always purchase the 100 calorie bread. If you're concerned about gluten, there are plenty of gluten-free products, from breads to pastas. Speaking of pastas, pastas are not your enemy. As long as you portion control your pasta and eat in moderation, you're good to go. Another option is whole wheat pasta. I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is so gross, but actually, if you prepare it properly, it's pretty tasty, and I'm all about making food taste good. In fact, the last thing I want to tell you about today are some basic staples that you should have in your kitchen that will make all your dishes flavorful. Kosher salt, black pepper, olive oil, canola oil, rosemary, basil, lemon, and garlic. Okay, we've covered a lot. I have a couple of awesome dishes that I'm going to be preparing later today, so I'm just going to pick up a few items. Now I think it's time for Adrian to help you get moving. Remember, when starting an exercise program, it should cost you nothing until you're ready to take it to the next level. All of us start out at various levels of strength and conditioning, just based on our background and natural physical abilities. Eventually, you'll have to figure out your own strength, endurance, and cardiovascular baseline. But for now, we're going to start you out with the basics, by walking and using your own body weight for resistance. Walking is one of the best and most effective exercises anyone can do at any age because it costs nothing and can be done anywhere. Best of all, it puts the least amount of stress on your body. To get started, all you need is a good pair of walking shoes. Most running shoe stores can fit you properly according to your size, stride, and gait. To start a walking regimen, you want to walk at a moderate pace for 30 to 60 minutes. This is the most effective way to boost your metabolism, burn calories, and build endurance. A good walking form is heel to toe, taking small steps and swinging your arms as you go. 
The talk test is a good way to pace yourself. If you can't talk while you walk, you may want to slow down a bit. For those of you who want to make it a little more challenging, there are several ways to do this. If you're using a treadmill, increase the incline. If you're outside, map out a course that includes three or more hills. While at work, walk the halls and take the stairs three to four times a day. During your walk, add a few intervals by jogging or sprinting for a short distance. To make it a little more difficult, add weights, ankle weights, hand weights, or even a fitted weight vest. This will help you build overall strength and burn calories much faster. Remember, walking or jogging for 15 minutes or longer will improve your cardiovascular health. Using your own body weight for resistance will give you a solid foundation to prepare you for any exercise program you decide to embark on. Some of the most effective exercises can be done anywhere, but keep in mind, form is very important. The standing calf raise exercises the calf. Stand shoulder width apart and raise up on your toes. To increase the difficulty, elevate your toes on a stair or a step. This will extend the range of motion. Or try one leg at a time. The squat is one of the most effective exercises you can do. Stand shoulder width apart, bend your knees and lower your body until your upper legs are horizontal to the floor. Remember, the slower you perform this exercise, the more effective it is. The push-up is a great exercise because it builds overall upper body strength. The traditional push-up starts by placing your hands on the floor, shoulder width apart, and legs straight out, then lowering your body four inches from the floor. If in the beginning you find this too difficult, just bend your knees to the floor. The cross crunch is one of the most effective ab exercises you can do because it burns the most calories. Again, stand with your feet shoulder width apart and hands behind your head. Cross your right elbow to your left knee, then come back to the starting position and cross your left elbow to your right knee. The reverse tricep dips gets rid of that unwanted flab on the back of your arm. All you need to perform this exercise is a stable chair or bench. Placing your hands on the edge of the bench, lower yourself to the floor, then slowly raise yourself back to the top. If you find this too difficult, bending your knees may help. Remember, you're making a lifestyle change. Eating and moving is the only way. Most people start an exercise program with unrealistic goals and expectations, which is the main reason most people quit. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. We're back from shopping, and today we're going to make a frittata. What is a frittata? <laughs> what is a frittata? Well, basically, it's an Italian omelet. Okay. Okay. And it's just pretty much any ingredient that you would find in a regular omelet is what you will see in an Italian omelet. So what's the difference then? Well, the difference is one is flat and one is folded. So in this particular case, our omelet is going to be flat. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's get started. All right. Let's get started then. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, we're definitely going to need eggs. Now, do you prefer whole eggs or egg whites? Egg whites. Okay. Well, in this case, we're going to do half and half. So okay. we'll do four egg whites, four whole eggs. Okay. okay. So this makes a whole pie, correct? A whole pie, exactly. Okay. A whole omelet. Gotcha. Okay. Then we're going to use one cup of spinach. Um, we're going to dice up about a half a cup of tomato. And we're going to use a half a cup of reduced fat cheddar cheese. Okay. And one tablespoon of shallots. All right. All right. Okay. So we're going to get started. You have any questions? Uh, no. I'm sure, uh, you sure, Mr. Williams? No, come you, on, you're going right ahead. You're going right, right ahead. Right, I'm right, learning. All right, all right. I don't right. even know what a frittata is, so <laughs> go. Okay. All right, so we're going to add our eggs. So here's one egg. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's two. 
the whole egg now. Okay. That's three. You have the When one. are we coming to the egg whites? We're gonna get to the egg white. Do you even know how to make an egg white? I do, I make egg whites every morning. All right. Now, you can use egg beaters, the egg white egg beaters. So we're gonna do the egg white. Oops. That's it. I think we have I'm one. I'm an expert. Uh-huh. Okay, we have one more egg, and I'm gonna let you crack that one. All righty. All right. You saw my skills. Yeah, I saw, you saw your skills. skills. All right. That's, got Oops. it. Mm -hmm. Be careful now. How am I gonna get hurt with the egg? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got our four egg whole eggs and our egg whites. Now, the next thing we wanna do, well, I would like to wash my hands. Okay. Okay, so let me go wash my hands real quick. All right. All right, well, I'll throw this away and I'll wash thank mine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So while you wash your hands, I'm gonna go ahead and dice up our shallots, okay? So, we only need about a tablespoon of the shallots. Shallots are just like red onions or just like any other onion, but the only difference is, is that a shallot is a little bit sweeter, is not as strong as a um, onion. Okay. Yep. So we're gonna add about a tablespoon. All right, so is there a certain way, can, can I try that? Yes, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Show you my chopping skills. Okay, go ahead. So it's like this, the back of the knife? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's pretty good, pretty Hold good, on. pretty good. Now keep in mind, for those who don't want to chop, you know, they can always go buy pre-packaged chopped onions or use a chopper. Okay. okay, so can you bring the bowl down? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we're going to put in about, okay. how about we put it right there? So we're going to throw in about, we're going to say that's about a tablespoon. Okay. Okay, now we're going to add in. I'm starting to tear up. I know, me too. My eyes are burning as well. Okay, go ahead and add the spinach in. Okay. Throw it in there. Just... Throw it in. All yep. righty. Okay. Oh, one left. Okay. And then okay. go ahead and add our cheese. Our cheese. Go okay. ahead and add that in. And while you're just doing dump that. dump it? Yep. Just dump it. That's good. All right. Okay. So remember, you can put everything in here but the kitchen sink, okay? Okay. All right. So then we're going to take our tomatoes. We need to dice those. So we would do about, like I mentioned earlier, like about a half a cup. So I'm just going to take the membrane out. Ooh, my eyes are still burning. That's okay. <laughs> it's the onions. It's the onions. The okay. shallots. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're putting that. And then, all right. So then we're gonna just chop up, or actually dice, our tomatoes. Okay. And you can rough chop them. It doesn't really matter. It's no particular shape that they have to be in, but. Should it be fine though? Um, know, just... just regular medium dice. All right, so we have our tomato. Then we want to add our bacon. Our bacon? Yep, so turkey dice bacon. And bacon. Right, so we're going to go ahead, cut up our bacon. Definitely want to make sure that we. Um, not cut our bacon where our, because we don't want to mix everything up. So we're going to just chop up our bacon. Now, can you use any type of meat in this? Yeah, you actually can use like chicken or beef. And okay. also you can use um, shrimp, shrimp or crab okay, or salmon or any, any kind of meat you want to use, you can use in there. Okay? okay? So we have our turkey bacon. Now, what we want to definitely add, we want to add in, let's mix this up a little bit. And then we're going to add in our our sour cream. Okay. Okay. Now, is there any other alternatives for sour cream for yes. those who don't like if sour don't, cream, if you don't such like, as myself? Yes, if you don't like sour cream, you can use milk. Milk? Oh, yep. okay. So you can use about a half a cup or one cup of milk. And you can use like 2%, whatever you prefer. Or you can use- Low fat. Yep, or you can use cottage cheese. Oh, that's even better. Yep, you can use that. Okay, so we're gonna okay. add sour cream. Now, how many calories is one slice of this? Um, it's about 97 calories per serving, which okay. is not too bad. But it has a lot of protein in it. It's a lot of different vegetables. And that's the good thing about this uh, dish because, I mean, you can put whatever you want and you can right. kind of control it. Um, I would recommend just, you know, 
preparing it. I mean, it's a great brunch dish. Like, Def can it ahead. be can it be eaten cold or it has um, to be? I would say room temperature oh, or okay. warmed. Okay. So. But the, I, I just see this as a great meal to take to work, pull out for lunch, and right. it's very high in protein and a great after workout meal. Yep. Okay. Now, cracked pepper. We need that. Okay. So you can put in cracked pepper to taste. So I want to say maybe like a fourth of a teaspoon. Okay. So but you know we're eyeballing it. Yeah. You don't have to make. There's no mistakes unless you add too much salt. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. That's good. I know you're getting a little happy with that, but calm down. Grab the salt. Okay. Now okay. what type of salt is this? This is kosher salt. Kosher salt. So we're just okay. going to sprinkle a little bit of that in there. A little more? Yeah, a little more. Go ahead. That's good. All right. All right. All right. And the next thing we're going to do, we are going to, we have our heavy iron skillet. Okay. And we're going to spray it. Now, there's a couple of things here. Usually... There are two ways that you can prepare a frittata. Either you can cook it on the stove okay. or you can cook it in the oven. So normally sometimes people will cook it on the stove, maybe 10, 15 minutes right. at like a medium low heat, and then they'll finish it off in the oven. But in this case, we're going to just put it in the oven. So what's the, you, you keep it an omelet? Uh, <laughs> what's the difference? It's, I mean, so the only, it, is it less calories cooking it on, on the range no, versus baking? No, it has nothing to do with the calories. Okay. No, it's just the way it's prepared. It's okay. just two different ways you can prepare Does it. Does it taste different, but look it, different? Nope, the only difference is we're gonna prepare it in the oven. Okay. Okay, so That's I'm gonna spray our pan. Okay, make sure you, now you can use a heavy iron skillet or you can, there, you can use like an omelet skillet or. Um, so like some, some uh, chefs, they like to use a lot of butter. Can you use butter in there? Butter burns. Okay. So we don't wanna burn it. Gotcha. Okay. All right, so we're gonna pour it in the pan. All righty. All right, thank you, Mr. Williams. No problem. And we're gonna just smooth it out. So we have just about everything in there and a little extra protein. So now we're gonna walk it on over. We're gonna put this in the oven and bake it at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna set my timer for 30 minutes and start. All right, that's it, Mr. Williams. And when it's done, it's gonna look just like this. And that looks fantastic. Even I can make this. Exactly, and that's the point. We hope you enjoyed our show, Eat and Move, and are feeling positive about taking those first steps to a healthier lifestyle. Adrian, let's review what we talked about. Okay, first, let's remember that our primary goal is to show you how you can have a healthier lifestyle by making small, achievable changes over time. And to get started, you need to have clear goals that will motivate you to change. Then we develop a plan to achieve those goals. And that plan will involve looking at the foods we eat and buy at the store, then taking steps to follow a healthy diet that is not only good for you, but simple to prepare and tastes great. Also, there are a few basic exercises that most of us can do anywhere, which can be the beginning of your plan and lead to a more active and healthier lifestyle. Remember, this is a process, not a quick fix. By making small steps each day, you can achieve your dreams of living a healthier, happier life. Can we start over? <laughs>